going to be? What, why are you running for uh, Brooklyn Borough President? I'm running for Brooklyn Borough President because in, the, in my current capacity as the chair of housing and buildings and in my former capacity as the chair of small business, I know that as we have a recovery and resiliency conversation around the pandemic and recovering from the pandemic, um, there's a level of acumen that's necessary. And those are the two pillars of true recovery and resiliency, building capacity within our small businesses, job creation, and the ability to have responsible development are what we're gonna hinge on. And so because I have that unique ability and that acumen in those two areas, um, I, I, I wanna put that to work. I've leveraged every bit of uh, whatever I had in my council district um, to make the lives of those citizens better. And I wanna do the same for the borough of Brooklyn. We've had some small successes uh, that have changed the, the direction of the lives of my immediate council district. Uh, we've built uh, community centers where there were never any community centers. We've created naturally occurring retirement communities and any society that doesn't protect their elderly and or seniors and their youth is destined for failure. And I don't hear any other candidates talking about the importance of making sure that there are pathways to jobs uh, for hardworking Brooklynites or that we're willing to work with private and public partnerships to create affordability uh, in, a, in an increasingly unaffordable district. And housing police officers and over 8 million people. Um, there has to be a, a, a collaborative partnership for safety, but that has to be on the table. It has to be talked about. And from the largest bully pulpit in the city and state of New York, the borough president has to be championing this partnership between law enforcement and our communities to get us to a safe place. The people that I talk to that have left, some of them are very concerned with the safety of themselves and their family and the inability for leadership to get a grasp on how to keep us safe. So safety and the ability to create good solid pathways to jobs are the two main important things for bringing people back and getting people to stay. So uh, there, there's no secret and this is video. So I am, uh, uh, according to Guinness book, I'm the, uh, the, one of the biggest elected officials or politicians in the world. And I happen to be African-American, but I've used- One of the biggest, I think it's the biggest. That's the uh, title yeah, that you have. Yeah, I was trying, yeah, I was trying, to, I was trying to be uh, conservative with it, but yes. Um, the reason I bring that up is because I don't, um, um, my community has given me some heat sometimes for not saying defund and or abolish the police. And I'm saying, I don't get that luxury. I've had a one-year-old baby in his stroller, innocent life snuffed out through gun violence. And most recently, a 70-year-old woman on a public uh, a transportation on Black Lives Matter Plaza shot in the face. So I don't get the luxury of screaming defund, defund, defund with the law enforcement agencies. Now, it is not mutually exclusive to demand reform and accountability while still supporting the men and women who go to work every single day with two mandates. One is to serve in the communities that they're assigned admirably, and the other is to return home safely to their family. I don't think they're competing ideas. I think that that we can, and, and, and as the as the, de facto, the biggest <laughs> elected, black elected in the world, I think my voice uh, uh, gets to lend to the to the discussion around public safety and partnership with law enforcement going forward. Uh, I, I, the, the victimizing these marginalized communities is so secular. So today, I'm standing with the Hasidic community around hate crimes that they're experiencing. Tomorrow, I'm standing with the Asian community around hate crimes they're experiencing. The next day, I'm standing with the African American community about hate crimes. The one consistent theme is that from the top down, this narrative around uh, uh, Islamophobia and homophobia and xenophobia and every phobia has permeated this entire country. And we see it unfortunately uh, uh, in, in its worst form here in New York City. So these uh, attacks, and, and, and I, I've, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm so tired of having to go from community to community to echo the same sentiment. Now's the time and we have an opportunity to stand together, unified. Not, not joining each other in our respective communities when the incidents happen, but really now saying, all right, enough is enough. And from the black community to the Hasidic community, uh, to the Jewish community, to, 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 to the Asian community, we're gonna all stand up together and demonstrate a, a, a brand of unity that's never been seen before and really expose this bigotry and racism and, and, and the assaults that are taking place. Because what's happened is the rise 
and the inability to get our hands around it and to make those accountable and to have these registered as hate crimes. I've already seen it in the killings and that, that, that happens. We can't allow that to happen in our community. We can't allow uh, these few uh, very bad actors to continue to separate us as a, as a joint community. Uh, whether I'm bordering Williamsburg or bordering Crown Heights, the relationships between um, my community, the African-American or Black community, and um, the Jewish community are front and center. And, and we, can't, we can't hide. We're, we're across the street from each other. We live next door to each other. Um, Crown Heights is a perfect example of how we can you know, right the ship when it, when, during a very tumultuous time. We were able to do that. We've got to do that now with the Asian community and with the with the with the Jewish community and with the Black community and with the uh, Hispanic community all together. So this terrible time provides us with an opportunity to absolutely do that, and I'm poised to do that again. The the the, the largest bully pulpit in the state of New York from the largest person. <laughs> in the state of New York is, is a combination that I think gets people's attention. And I certainly intend to do that from the borough president's seat. Certainly looking at you or your uh, council district uh, and the confines, uh, including uh, Bedford Stuyvesant and Crown Heights, uh, areas that have uh, been known, uh, certainly historically, to have some degree of um, unease uh, in terms of uh, coexistence and, and some uh, different factions with different interests at root, you've, you've been able to kind of bridge those two gaps and, and bring the yes sides together. How do you do that on the borough wide level? Well, well, you know, it's funny, this, this, this borough president's race has allowed me the opportunity to go into every single corner of the borough of Brooklyn. And what I'm walking away with is way more similarities than there are differences. And we should be highlighting that. So the, the idea that who doesn't want to be safe in the communities that they live in? So public safety is a tremendous issue for every single corner. Who doesn't want to live in a place that's affordable? So affordability is who doesn't want to be able to send their children to the highest quality schools, whether it's yeshiva, whether it's uh, uh, DOE schools, who doesn't want that? So there are way more similarities. And what we found in Crown Heights was how to accentuate those similarities, how to accentuate the fact that family is the most important thing. How to, that's like that in every corner. So really, again, uh, stealing from the relationship between Richard Green and Rabbi Sterling and Rabbi Cohen and, and the way that they've set an example of how to not only peacefully coexist, but how to grow together. So the coexisting part is the baseline, right? And, and, and we're so far past that in Crown Heights, that I know that there's a model and example that we can use in Williamsburg, in, 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 in Crown Heights, in, in Borough Park, in all of these places where um, uh, uh, the demographics are changing so rapidly. We have to use that in our favor and begin, begin to incorporate everyone into the communities, even though they've existed a particular way, relationship and allyship to, uh, to my Jewish counterparts didn't start as a council member. I actually lived in Israel and I joked with um, the Jewish caucus oftentimes that I should be a member of the Jewish caucus because if, if if criteria is living, earning and spending shekels, then, then I probably outdo some of my some of my uh, Jewish colleagues. So so we, we joke about that, but the importance of that is understanding um, culturally the norms and how similar they are to cultural norms that we have and being- How did you live in Israel? Oh, I was there two years. I, I played professionally um, on uh, Maccabi Pestatikva. So, okay. So and, I, guess, I guess Amari followed in your footsteps, not the other Amari way. Amari followed in my, my footsteps, 100%. Um, I'm, 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 I also uh, was there in the last bastion of kibbutz that, that existed. Um, and, and, and Rabbi, I mean, um, uh, Congressmember Nadler asked me the name of the kibbutz. And since it was late 80s, early 90s, I don't remember the name, but I'm researching it so that I can, <laughs> I can, I can yeah. tell everybody. But, but, but that experience actually shaped my time at the council when we began to have conversations about cooperative economics and those kinds of things, I was like, oh, I kind of seen that before. So this is not, that wasn't even, that wasn't even new to me. So I'm just gonna, uh, so what some of the other, uh, you know, candidates ha have expressed in terms of uh, the uh, boycott, divestment and uh, sanction movement. Yeah, so, so we had at the council a resolution and I supported that resolution hundred percent. So, so yes. You're, you're against that. I just want to be clear. Yes, 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 yes. That's yes, what the resolution yes. was for, for those people right. who may not be familiar. Uh, yes. You mentioned in a previous answer uh, the uh, significance of uh, yeshiva education. 
Uh, certainly, it's it, it's of the utmost importance. And like you said, when when family is everything, and parents do whatever they can, their children yeshiva education plays a primary uh, role. Uh, in the past couple of years, there's been a significant push for uh, a greater degree of government oversight and I would say intrusion into uh, yeshiva education and curriculum. Even though as borough president, you're not directly involved, although as a council member, you were on the uh, committee for, uh, on the education committee. Yes. What's your feeling with regard to uh, the uh, push to have greater oversight into yeshivas? Uh, you know, I, I think that we we should be concentrating more on the million students who are who are having difficulty in the DOE and making sure that they have access. 